Frequent followers of my channel may have picked up on one very silly little detail. My frivolous use of the words best TARDIS team. <laughs> the best TARDIS team. They're the best TARDIS crew. The dog aside, this is the best TARDIS team. Best TARDIS team, best TARDIS team. But if you say something enough times, it loses all of its meaning. Just because you like the cast doesn't mean they're the best TARDIS team. They can't all be the best, Samuel. I agree with you, so today I want to rectify that claim. To lay it to rest. Drinking game. Watch all his videos and take a shot every time Sam says, Best TARDIS team. I do not endorse this drinking game. I do not want any deaths on my watch. To fall back on formula, guys, I'm burned out. Let's make the most of the tier maker trend before it is over and allow me to show you this template I made yesterday. It is here we will communally decide the best of the best of the best. I've only included some of the more iconic partnerships here as otherwise we truly would be here all day with every possible combination of TARDIS crew. If your favourite isn't here, just assume I've skipped it for a reason. Like I don't have a strong opinion on say Six Perry and Frobisher, for instance. Eleven, Kazran and Marilyn Monroe, no way. If there's one thing I know, it's that Doctor Who fans can get very particular about details. And I'm not here to stoke the fire of <laughs> what constitutes companion in the first place. Does the Brigadier? Is Jackie a companion? I don't care. I'm more so generally comparing the main cast across different eras of the show with a couple fun ones thrown in for extra. Okay, let's get to it. I've attached this tier list template in the comments below. Uh, feel free to make your own and get back to me. Let's take this as chronologically as possible with the OG TARDIS crew. Little bit of a confession, I haven't seen a whole lot of the First Doctor. Like an embarrassing amount of the First Doctor. But something I was always won over by it was the Frank charm of characters like Ian and Barbara. I didn't expect a 60s kooky sci-fi serial to have such engaging down-to-earth characters, and this first cast are amazing. Uh, Susan would be the weak link in my opinion, but that's why we're in B. Following that up with, oh god, Vicky and Stephen, and the dreaded Dodo Chapman. The Doctor travelling with an extinct bird was a fun 60s idea but the series hadn't worked out what a companion was yet, so most of these are pale imitations of the original crew. I don't think so. Now, now, Ben, Polly. We move on to the second Doctor with his original TARDIS team. Do these two have fans? Or is everyone, like me, waiting for Jamie and Zoe to show up? They're two very dated companions, in a good way. Polly is arguably the first overtly feminist character in the series. Whilst Ben is a bit of a loudmouth odd man who I should gravitate towards, but mostly he comes off as a little bit aggravating. Oi, where's the doctor? They could grow on me, but for now. Jamie and Zoe. We have missed out Victoria, but that's because apart from Tomb of Cybermen, I've never actually seen a Victoria Wakefield story. Whoops. Uh, these guys are mm, iconic. A perfectly laid out team with three very different characters, always complementing one another. Zoe is adorable, Jamie is even more adorable, and they really bring out the best in their Doctor. Um, when they get split up at the end of the War Games, and their return back in the Five Doctors, if you could call it that, are both expertly played. Because I give a shit about them. Joe and Three! Oh, it's a shame, because Joe does all the character development. And the Doctor does none of it. He puts in none of the work in this relationship. He humbles over time, but it's not quite character development because the scripts just allow him to be wrong more. That said, I still love seeing them together. And even their early low moments are nothing compared to the emotional takeaway of the Green Death, an ending which shows you just how far this run has come. Harry Sullivan, Sarah Jane Smith, and the Fourth Doctor. I always liked Sarah Jane Smith with Pertwee more. Uh, I think she was a brighter character, a louder, more audacious feminist of an icon. And with the fourth Doctor, it's still definitely there. But it only comes out <laughs> in seldom, once she's already in danger and screaming like a damsel in distress. 
she'll get herself out of a situation, but she's still very much plain companion. Harry Sullivan also gets a bad rap. Uh, they jointly go into B tier for me. Too short-lived, I always thought. The Fourth Doctor and Lula. Um, that's C tier for me for no other reason than it allows the Fourth Doctor to sort of blossom into a bit of a smartest man in the room type, and uh, not in a good way. As Twitter user Fire Holly put it best, there's a real case of middle class tea time bleak set meanness to this whole era. It's not all there is, and there are some great stories with Leela, but the Gothica of the Baker years isn't quite as fun. And it's a stark difference to his warm friendship with Sarah. And although they're both brilliant, I don't think this Doctor needed a companion for him to talk down to. Which is why Romana goes all the way to the top. Amazing chemistry. You could tell these two got married in a weird fucking stint because they are both strange people. K9 is the only detractor here. Look at his little fucking face. Ah, uh, but it's not enough to drop him down for ranks. Did somebody ask for a packed TARDIS? Because he certainly didn't. Oh, Fifth Doctor era, I don't know what to make of you. Well, actually, I do know what to make of you. I made a 19 minute video detailing the Fifth Doctor's era with companions in scrutable detail. But you're trash. Oh, that hurts to do. These are my childhood team. When it went to the classic series, it was the Doctor and Ace, or Tegan, Adric, Nyssa. But individually, they don't work, and chemistry-wise, they really don't work. And the Fifth Doctor just seems annoyed to have them around at all. It's a mild improvement when it just comes down to Tegan Jovanka and Turlo. But as I'm sure many are aware, Turlo is one of my favourite characters in this goddamn series, and he boosts it up enough. Tegan also starts to have a bit more fun around this era, and whilst the Fifth Doctor never reciprocates, they are a strong B-tier team. Oh no, uh, it was coming. It was coming. <sighs> Both likeable cast members. Okay, don't get me wrong. Some decent stories in a very underrated era. But zero chemistry. Oh my god, these two needed a third member to defuse them, or needed to go their separate ways entirely. They've been redeemed on audio and comic series, like a, quite a fair bit, like everything from Colin's era, but I'm going by the TV stuff, and they put a bad taste in my mouth. Some Doctor and Ace! Eight here. Fantastic. If you put Hex in there too, possibly S tier. But uh, I'm going to even it out, because for most of their run it is just the Doctor and Ace, sometimes Mel. And it's crazy that this Doctor didn't even really have a personality until Ace showed up. It's a very late dynamic they share, but it stretched a long time. This is the best teacher-mentor relationship in the series. Full stop. Ace and Charlie. Oh. The middle ground between classic series stoicism sort of like a distant companion helper, and the new series, Love Interest. Charlie occupies a very particular space in Doctor Who. She's a very important companion, and I think the two of them really just do the whole spectrum of what Doctor Who can be. A tier. Cariz Who? <sighs> I guess I just missed the boat with Lucy Miller. Because I can tell you, Rose Tyler was not that liked. And this knockoff, this audio knockoff, does not play to Paul McGann's strengths. Imagine if you combined all the worst parts of Rose and Donna, and then thrust it back in time onto a classic Doctor. It would clash. She feels like she's just taking little pot shots of the Doctor, because that's what she's meant to do. She's all mouth, and it's a little bit forced. Plus, as I say again, you can always tell when McGann is bored. I haven't seen a swan song yet, but my god, it will have to win me around. Uh, the Eighth Doctor and Molly, on the other hand. Oh, I love Molly. Oh, I love Molly. I hate her series, but I love Molly. Her and Livchenka make a very solid team. Livchenka is a Dalek camp spy, whilst Molly O'Sullivan is a Irish Catholic, no-nonsense bad bitch. And she actually does one of the most badass things a companion has ever done in Doctor Who. Into the Revival. 
I like how Rose impresses and also tests the Ninth Doctor, episode to episode. She really keeps him on his toes in a way that she doesn't do. Uh, I think she loses so much complexity with his successor. And the late game inclusion of Jack makes this a perfect trio. Short lived, but in the comics and the audios and the novels, I can dream. Which takes us onto the next era. I've included Jackie and Mickey because although they may not be resident TARDIS members, whatever that means, they've both been in the TARDIS and they are the cast of the show. Jackie Tyler is indispensable, and you will not convince me otherwise. I get the idea of the show as a bunch of time and space dates, but it's like watching a public display of affection. They're just a tad too cutesy. The Doctor, Martha, and sometimes Jack. The love triangle between the Doctor, Martha, and Rose, who is in a different dimension, is a bit detracting. It's a little bit cringy and beneath this show at times. The Doctor should be more than a lovesick puppy, but it's more the fact that they take turns saving each other. It's more the fact that Martha has to really earn her stripes that does make a different chemistry. She saves him, I think, more times than he saves her in this series. She's ultra capable and uber likable. I love Martha Jones and I really like the Doctor in Series 3. I think he's dark and slightly on the edge and even though he's smiling, he is somewhere else. The Doctor Donna? Oh shit, easy. You don't need an explanation for that. They're S tier, obviously. Ooh, the Doctor, Cindy and Gabby. This is from the Titan Comics run. Uh, these are the Doctor's new, sort of like, post the next Doctor team. Gabby, the art student from New York City, is actually one of my favourites, probably the best Titan has. But our friend Cindy? Uh, not so much. All in all, they're good, but just a little bit generic. Next up, the Three Ponds. Ooh, this is a tough one. Because they are great, but how great? Although he's always compelling, in my opinion, the 11th Doctor is not always likeable. And you'd think his companions are pretty constant. Nope, because so much of 11's run is defined by their relationships to the Doctor. There's some early stuff with Rory where they literally compare dick sizes. And I'm just not there for that. That's old hat. But Series 6 onwards, they are one solid, well-developed team and we really get to see them both grow up. But once that dynamic is fixed, oh my god, the Doctor just feels like an extended family member. Like a naughty nephew. Um, mm, that goodbye alone is gonna make me go, ah shit, that's a lot of people in S tier, Sam. Next is The Doctor, Alice, David, Bowie, and Ark. A comic series. A very weird, mad Captardus team, A tier. Oh, Best Artist Team. <laughs> yep, there's that bias I was talking about. But seriously, there are no two characters more nuanced and developed than Clara Oswald and the Twelfth Doctor. In all of who, there's not one. Their relationship is so transcendental and important. A connection so deep, I don't even know what she is to him. She was there on the final day, within the confession dial, all of the years on Trenzalor. As far as the Doctor's lifespan goes, she is THE companion. And that fact must infuriate people. Too bad, tough luck, Nardo and Bill. These three go a little bit lower because I never just got the chance to get attached attached. Nardole really grew on me, whilst Bill did the opposite. Just slowly I got a little bit less interested every episode. But they did inspire their Doctor to take on a new role, um, showing my Doctor at his best. For that, they get the B. That leaves us with two, and I'm just noticing now, what is... Um, who is this guy from Town Called Mercy, and why is he here? Okay. I guess, <laughs> I guess I imported him uh, along with the other pictures and it's turned him into a little icon. So that's S tier. And finally, the fan. Ooh, not a big fan of the series. 
but they're growing on me. To call them trash would be a lie. Um, Graham is perfect. Ryan is growing on me. I think what they did with him in Resolution was fantastic. Whilst as we all know, Yaz is actually a ghost and can only be seen by one of the main characters. How else do you explain a companion being a complete non-presence after a whole series? And the thing is, no matter how much they tell us they are a fam, there's no sense of family here. None of them compliment this iteration of the Doctor, I feel like she just keeps him around because she's desperately needy? I have no idea what the Doctor makes of Yaz, I don't know what Ryan and the Doctor's relationship even is. Which after a whole series of character based episodes, we really should know. But at the same time, I want to see these guys again, even just so we can develop on them further. Please do. The Wilfred Mott stand-in should not be the heart of your TARDIS team. Okay, let's fix this. There's a lot of people in S tier. We said we were going to find the best, not the six best. Whoop, you're gone. <clears throat> I probably would take these guys down a peg. If we could only pick one out of these four teams. Ooh. Actually, you know what? I'm indecisive and I can't pick. Tell me in the comments below which one of these five teams is the best. I want to hear your pick out of these top five and then your favourite. Your wrong, wrong favourite. Here I am trying to do it all by myself. What do I know? I put Carla Jex on this list, a man who has never been in the vicinity of a TARDIS. I'm gonna tally the votes, that's what a community is for. Maybe the real TARDIS team was us all along.